These are the six recordings that I made at home with the Zoom microphone. Uh, I put them all into Logic so that I could decide which ones I wanted to use for the song and if they sounded like they could be mixed into the song. After I'd chosen the sounds that I wanted, I put them into separate tracks and then started to trim down the audio files so that I could put them into a beat. The next thing that I did was line up the audio files so that I could uh, put them in a drum formation and then EQ them to make it sound more like a drum. After I put the drum beat in a formation that sounded good and then EQ'd it, I decided to put the next part in, which is the car engine turning on. Uh, I later decided that this didn't quite work with the song and I changed it out for some other sounds. These are the audio waveforms for the sounds that I recorded. The first one is the car engine turning on. I wanted to make the bass more loud and then cut out some of the high end sound so that you could just get the engine readying up. And the second one is the pop from a syringe for medicine. Uh, I wanted to have more of a bass sound from it and then cut out the high end so that you couldn't hear the pop as much and it sounded more like a kick drum. Okay, so for this next bit, I actually went into flex mode and logic so that I could change the notes of the pop from the syringe. This is because I wanted to make it uh, a lot of a lower note and then mess around with it and see if I could make a sort of pattern with the pop. I then started putting this beat together, as you can see with the pops. These are the smaller audio files and then the car engine. I trimmed it down so it was just when the car was revving up so that you could get the sort of build up and then the drop down. I tried to work in the car revving up with the bike wheel spinning and then the pops but it didn't quite work as well as I thought it would. So this is a picture of the beat that I decided to go with after I'd gone rid of the engine. I didn't really think that the engine worked with the sort of style that I was trying to make. So I switched out the engine with the bike wheel spinning against a ruler. Uh, it worked a lot better and it's still in the final song. This screenshot shows the pretty much bass form of my beat for the whole song, well, for the intro. And this is the one that I stuck with because it sounded good with the melody line that I chose. Uh, you can see the uh, there's the bike wheel in the second row and then there's the pops in the top row. I actually changed the pitch of the pops to make it go into a sort of a little repeated riff so that you could hear something else other than just like the hit of the pop and then the bottom one is another wheel spinning it's kind of like the the chain of the wheel after i established a beat i put it on a repeated track so that i could listen to it and try and work out a melody for it with a midi synth and i worked something out which sounded really good at the beginning so on the left side you can see the pattern that i went for it kind of goes up then back down and then back up in a sort of a repeated rhythm and I decided to get rid of that because it didn't quite work with the melody that I'd chosen. So I started to put it at the same note for all of them, so it just sounded like a normal kick drum again. This is a picture of the EXS24 that I used to sample a voice to make it sound like a monosynth. Uh, I didn't quite know the program well enough, so I was sort of fiddling around with it until it sounded good. And in the end it didn't work with the style that I wanted, so I decided to get rid of it. Some of the beat sounds are sounding a little dry and empty, so I put some space sound around it to give it some reverb to make it sound like it's more of a drum rather than an object. I decided to put a guitar instead of the synth because I can work better with a guitar in making melodies and making songs because I'm not massively skilled in using synths. This is one of Logic's preset amps. It's called Blue Wave and it sounded really good with the style that I wanted to go for. It also worked well with the beat and with the chords and solos. So I decided to keep it in. So I decided to change the sounds from the original ones that I recorded at home. I kept the bike wheel spinning but I wanted to get a better drum sound rather than a pop. So the kick drum that I used or the bass drum uh, I got a drumstick and I hit the leather chair where the seat is and it sounded really good because it was quite bassy and it didn't have much of a uh, leftover sound after. And the second one is the cushion of the red chair. This had a sort of softer sound that you could put in the background 
Uh, I didn't actually put this in because I felt that the bass drum from the leather chair was good enough to cover that. And the third picture is actually hitting the plastic on the side of the chair. This was a sort of hi-hat sound that I could put in the background, which added some more character to the song. I believe the microphone that I used to record this was the 57, and I wanted a large condenser mic so I could get the sound rather than it all being in focused into one spot on the microphone. It would get the sound from the room as well, bouncing back and then hitting the mic. After I recorded the new drum beats, I put the guitar parts in and timed it all up and then I also recolored the different tracks so that I could tell which ones I was editing at certain times because I was getting confused and then accidentally deleting some tracks and then having to undo it and this helped me to focus on it. Okay, so now I'm just going to put some of the bounces in that I got from the different stages of the project so I'm just going to explain which parts are what in the bounces. Okay, so the opening of that song was the edited pop with flex mode. Uh, it sounded good at the beginning, but it didn't quite work with the synth, which is why you can't hear it when the synth comes in. Uh, that synth wasn't actually the vocal synth, though. That was just a MIDI input from uh, Logic, so that I could work out the sort of melody that I wanted to put in with the song. Uh, that was the vocal guide that I put in for the song, so that when I start recording the vocals, I have a layout for the singer. That was the introduction for the song, and at the moment the only thing I want to change from that is the riff when it comes in towards the end. I want to lower the high notes on that because at some points it can get quite eerie, and I'm probably going to change that in the final mix.